I do like a new gun review, and it's always interesting when it's a bench rest champion winner and an improved model. But is it? Is it actually a bench rest champion or improved? <laughs> Hello and welcome to AAR On Air. This week it's the turn of the P3 from RTI. This is the upgraded and improved Profit. At first glance, it's quite obvious what changes have been made to this version of the successful predecessor, the Profit 2. The changes are both external and internal. But before we get to that part, it's probably worth just pointing a couple of things out from the advertising blurb. The first thing that grabbed my attention was the wording on the box. Extreme bench rest winner of the 50 yard EBR 2019, which is indeed true about RTI. And I know one of the shooters personally. However, it most definitely wasn't this gun or this version. Furthermore, it wasn't even using the barrel that is fitted in this P3. So, putting that claim on this P3 box doesn't seem to fit well. It's a little like having a 1 litre Ford Fiesta and putting Le Mans Championship winner on the side of it. Ford did indeed win the Le Mans with the GT40, but certainly not with the Fiesta. I'm not saying it isn't an accurate rifle, Far from it, and I will be putting that to the test later on in the review. So, let's take a look at the ambidextrous magazine claim on the company's blurb. Well, it is ambidextrous, but does require you getting the tools out to change the new added flexi-cheek rest from right hand to left handed shooting, which means the magazine, that amazing floating item, no longer floats as it's blocked from moving over by that rest. Furthermore, that cheek rest means you can't get your eye down as low as you could to the scope when you were using the Mark II version and you will most likely need to add high amounts to compensate. Now, I realise this can happen on other rifles, but this is a third generation incarnation of this particular rifle, and it seems to have created an issue the other two didn't have, maybe. Now, at this point, it sounds like I'm all set against this rifle, and it may sound like I'm out of my normal character in this review. That isn't the case. This is more from a frustration point of view, when it doesn't seem to match the claims a perfectly good competition winning company appears to be making. I think we should do a closer walk around and see what makes this P3 compact tick. It is 670 millimeters long, which is just shy of 26 and a half inches. It feels quite a lump of metal at 3.24 kilograms unscoped, but this should feel less weighty when shouldered due to its diminutive size. The overall design is very close to the Profit 2 with one or two subtle differences. The version I have here is the base model in P3 without the carbon bottle on the front. This has the standard non-adjustable regulator, which is very reminiscent to a paintball regulator. However, these are available in performance variant with the carbon tank and the RTI adjustable regulator, which is probably the one to go for. They have kept to the very metal skeletal design and that AR-15 type rubberized grip, which is nicely centered to give it balance. The triggers are naturally a two-stage item and are very adjustable with the adjusters at the rear on the butt plate, making the whole process very simple. But be aware that 
access to those adjusters is not possible if you have this in left hand shooter mode with that cheek rest set low and on the other side. There are Picatinny type rails on the top for your quick changeover scope and on the bottom to accommodate a bipod or the like. The top one has had some thought put into it and is actually adjustable on the MOA, which is a really nice touch and is really aimed at the higher power or FAC versions, not really on a sub 12 foot pound gun. The side lever is not quite as smooth as the P2, but nonetheless is pretty sure-footed when you get it past that initial 25% on the pull. This isn't transferable from left to right though. The connecting rods and tube on the underside have not been blued on the P3, but left bare silver metal for some reason. It does make them stand out, but doesn't feel to have the same attention to finishing off that the P2 had. As we've already mentioned, the rear cheek rest, well, on the original, one of the things I didn't really care for was the fact that you were resting on cold steel, which in winter could be a little uncomfortable. I would have thought some sort of neoprene wrap would have sorted that out, both cost effectively and simply. But RTI have decided to fit a rather flexible plastic cheek rest and if you were to lower it completely to allow you to carry as low a scope mounts as you can possibly do then the magazine will be tight under the rest hence the cutout on the rest to try and accommodate that magazine. It is far more comfortable than the old P2 but does seem to be a bit of an odd fix. Now there is a power adjuster built into the buttstock but in this sub 12 foot pound version I couldn't for the life of me get it to alter anything. Maybe that's for the FAC power versions. They have fitted a rear rubberized butt pad which is shaped and a lot more comfortable than the standard flat hard metal version on the previous models but it is quite a loose fit and is easily knocked off. I did this several times in use. Filling this is very easy. Simply attach the female foster fitting to the male adapter on the neck at the front of the air tank and fill to a maximum working pressure of 300 bar. Let's take a look at the power output shall we on this sub 12 foot pound version in 177 caliber. Using standard 8.44 grain pellets it saw 738 feet per second which is 10.21 foot pounds or 13.84 joules. Let's drop some heavier pellets in and see if we can improve that. Some 10.43 grain pellets saw 682 feet per second which is 10.68 foot pounds or 14.48 joules. Now this does seem really quite low for a sub 12 foot pound gun and I tried all the settings on the adjuster with no real effect. So this is likely to need to go back to have it set and adjusted a little higher because to me 10.2 foot pounds it's a little too low really. Time to get this compact P3 out on the range. And it's hot in here and it's even hotter out there. Anyway, because it's so compact I thought I would fit a Veyron scope to keep it nice and short and in character. So here we go, out at 40 metres. RTI Compact P3 three so it's profit three as opposed to the two. I've popped a Veyron 624 scope on the top just because it's compact so the scope I think would look, be be would look better if it was compact along with it. Uh, this is the base model it's not the fancy model. Magazine loading it's the the lovely swivel thing but the cheap rest balks that a little bit it's not a major problem but you do have to take it off and physically screw it back in the other side screw some bolts out to screw that in it's as low as I can possibly get it the 
for it to fit and not catch. I mean, at that, it, it's right down on the magazine. So it's caught on the magazine. I can't get it any lower, even though it looks as though there's adjustment left. And I have found in use, it you really have to push your cheek into the rest. Uh, basically, uh, I mean, these are medium mounts. You're going to want some high mounts to be able to see through it nice and clearly and easier rather than squashing your face into the uh, the cheek rest it is it's got an adjuster doesn't do anything it's got this piece on the on the back and it does keep coming off which is a little bit frustrating and it just clips over but hey see how we go it's charged up we're down at 40 meters it's heavy it's even heavier now there's a scope on top. I think it's heavy for a small compact gun, but it does carry the weight mostly back, as you would expect from a bullpup. I have sighted this in down at 40 meters and probably used about seven shots. So now I'm just gonna go through with pretty much what's left in the magazine and see how we fare. It's an oddity. It, it, I can't help thinking that the P3, which everybody was waiting for, isn't that much of an improvement on the P2. And in some things, I actually prefer the P2. But each to their own. Let's give it a go, shall we? See how we fare. Safety is a push through from right to left. So you've got to get your head so far down. But anyway, less talking, a little bit more action, as uh, I think Elvis once said. It's a beautiful day for it. In fact, it's actually really very hot. That was my fault. That's not the gun's fault. That was definitely my fault. That's it, lock open, which is a nice feature. Pull out, we're through, but of course. It's easily capable of single hole shooting, without a shadow of a doubt. The one thing they are is accurate or certainly the ones that I have used they have always been accurate. Let me go and get the target and I'll show you where I went wrong. Here we go. Nothing wrong with that at all. The thing that went wrong was me. This one on the left-hand side was me. I pulled that one. I knew I'd done it as soon as I'd, I'd gone. The problem is where I'm gripping the gun, my finger, because it's a hot day, is actually wants to be lower down, not where this position is. It, it, my finger wants to be lower down. It's just mainly I'm, I'm probably holding it wrong. I've not got used to the gun. So I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna blame the gun for it. It was my fault. So that one missed. The rest, well, pretty much it's all through one elongated hole. They're all touching, no problem at all. It's accurate. I expected it to be accurate. All the ones that I've ever shot have always been accurate. It's, there's just something about it. it. It's as if they haven't taken the care on the version three to finish it off and go that extra mile. You know, they're, they're a, a, a championship winning 
company and they just seem to have, I don't know, let it slip just a little bit to my mind. If you want a gun that's accurate, you've got a gun that's accurate. But there are some compromises to it. And for that kind of money, then you, you've got to be prepared to accept those compromises. If you're going to do, if you're going to have one of these, it's the carbon bottle to have and it's the better regulator. But even saying that with the heavier bottle and the, the cheaper regulator, there's nothing wrong with that. And this will comfortably stretch out further. It does feel a little bit like shooting a 2.2 rather than a 177 because the power and the speed is down to what it should be. It should be certainly should be closer to 12 foot pounds, uh, and the the wheel on the back isn't doing anything. So I can only assume it, it doesn't work in sub 12, or it certainly doesn't work to any great extent. It's accurate. It will give you a nice military style, weighty, compact gun if this is the style that you like. Yeah, no doubting its accuracy at all. Back to the studio. Well, RTI are known for their accuracy and I'm pleased to say it hasn't embarrassed itself at all and does, even in sub 12 foot pound, make a pretty accurate tool. The retail price on this is currently around £1,280 for this non-performance version and £1,645 for the performance version with improved regulator and the carbon tank. This, make, this makes them higher up on the price range and puts them in the same category as some other bullpups which are arguably more enclosed and shall we say more sympathetic to user comfort. I am a little at a loss with this P3. I can see they have tried to make some upgrades, but they don't seem to have necessarily improved on the P2 in some ways. And some of those improvements seem to have come with compromises, quite big ones. I like the rear, more comfortable butt pad, but this could have been maybe a little bit better made. And I like the idea of the adjustable scope rail for longer distance shooting. I don't understand the bare metal on the side bit. And that cheek riser choice. <sighs> no, I don't understand that either. And the hammer adjuster seems completely redundant. Certainly on this sub 12 foot pound version. The styling will definitely suit some shooters who like the skeletal look. The half inch UNF thread on the end is going to be needed for you to put a silencer on it because it does have quite a bark. But don't go running off with the idea that because it's skeletal it is lightweight. Because it isn't. Yes, it's an accurate tool and yes, it's compact. From there... Well, I'll let future users and buyers decide on that one. I won't be keeping this in order to long-term test it, though. That's it from me this week. Please, thumbs up, subscribe, click the old alarm bell, check out the AAR website, and as always, a big thank you to Vector Air for their help with this one. Above all, as always, the biggest thanks goes out to you guys for watching. Please, stay safe and shoot safe, and hopefully... I'll see you next week. Bye for now.